Glenn with Falcon Quest. Today we're gonna to talk about an interesting topic. But I'm going, I am gonna have a viewer discretion advised. Today we're talking about rats, viewer discretion. If you don't like rats, you might not wanna watch this. So let me start this journey today about talking about my first introduction to rats. I was in junior high school and the high school had lab rats that they were using for whatever uh, work in a high school project. At the end of the school year, they needed to get rid of the rats. And us kids, we heard that they were looking for homes for their rats. So I went ahead and I was able to pick up two or three of these rats. And I'm telling you, they made great pets. They were a lot of fun, but not for everybody. My first introduction was way back then, but my later years, I come to the understanding that in the birds of prey, for those of you that might have reptiles, such as your larger snakes, maybe tegu lizards, those types of things, there is a food source of mice and rats, and various sizes and ages of these are used to keep our animals alive. It wasn't too long ago I came to the concept and the understanding that it would be a good idea to raise some of my own food because after all, really nothing seems to reproduce like rats. Rats have the ability to really crank out babies. They are baby making machines and if there weren't animals like birds of prey and other such animals that would keep their populations at bay, I'm pretty sure they along with cockroaches would pretty much take over the world. A rat can have babies as young as two months of age and they can have large litters. They can have, my rats tend to have 10 to 12 pups per litter. And if I put a male in with my female, within 48 hours after she's given birth, she will get pregnant again. And then in approximately 21 days, I'm gonna have another litter of rats. So you can see that if you have a breeding colony of one or two males or three, five or whatever females, one is able to stock the freezer with available rats of various ages and sizes for your bird. I raise my rats outdoors. I'm in South Carolina. It is 100, and I'm not joking, it is 111 degrees today with the heat index. My rats are outside. They're, uh, they have fresh air, but they survive. I haven't lost one to the heat yet. All right, when it comes to raising live food for your animals, I can't stress enough that we need to do these things humanely. We buy food from the grocery stores, chicken, hamburger, those types of things. And it's kind of sad in this day and age, but a lot of people don't realize that all that meat we buy in a grocery store comes from living animals. Of course, they don't need to be mistreated before we consume them. I keep my rats in what would be your typical lab rat container. And it works very well. Of course, I don't have the water bottles attached here. I can clean them easy. I put in pine shavings. I don't use the cedar ones. I put in pine shavings. I can go two or three days and not even mess with the rats. The water bottles, I use two per container. I don't even have to change the water more than once every two or three days. As far as the bedding, I can, depending on the, the time of the year, how many rats I have in a pen, I can go several days and the bedding remains dry. Because I keep my rats outside, I don't just keep them out like this. I have, I converted actually a pigeon coop. They had very tight wire spacing so that our black pine snakes can't get in and eat the eggs or the baby pigeons back when I had pigeons. Well, that setup works perfectly to keep these containers for my rat breeding colony. I place them in there. They're in the shade. They don't get wet. Fox, possums, raccoons, those types of animals can't get into them and they're just there and easy to maintain, easy to use. All of the smell is outside, away from the house. The other nice thing about having rats as part of your breeding program is the mulch. I use natural pine bedding. When that gets 
spoiled with their feces and urine makes excellent fertilizer to put around your plants and that type of a thing. I am a firm believer of nutrition. One of the reasons why I raise my own food source as part of the food diet that I give my birds. My birds of prey, I just don't order through through the catalog or supply uh, centers that produce uh, quail, frozen quail, frozen mice, frozen rats, that type of thing. If I raise my own, not only am I saving a lot of money, but I can feed my rats very healthy. Therefore, they are more nutritionally valued for my birds of prey. Today they had some apple. The other day I had uh, some asparagus and I don't like using the bottom ends of the asparagus. I cut that off and I, I eat the tops of the asparagus. Well, the bottoms went to the rats. When I do cauliflower or broccoli, the, the stems of all that goes to the rats. Apples, I have peaches on my peach tree, goes to the rats. So they get this very diet, they're very nutritionally fit. And then when I feed them to my birds, my birds are very healthy. I can honestly say, I have been a falconer now for nearly 30 years. I can honestly say that when I have started this breeding program and fed this to my animals, my animals have tended to be, it seems to me, much more healthy. It seems that they're more vibrant, that their feather condition is great. It's just, they just seem to put on weight well, hold weight well. They seem to do very good when this is part of their diet. Of course, I don't feed exclusively rats. I also feed other animals such as squirrel and other native animals in the area that are natural and fresh for my birds of prey. Because just like us humans, a quality varied diet adds to good health. Some of my birds of prey will live 20 or 30 years in captivity. That can only be obtained with a healthy diet. Why I choose rats over mice. This would be about the size of a big mouse. But it's a very young, it's just barely weaned rat actually. I can harvest smaller than this obviously if I want to if I want something larger I can grow it bigger but the fecundity rate or should I say the rate of reproduction of the rat is actually greater than that of the mouse therefore I choose to raise rats for my food source I can harvest them at whatever age I want to harvest them and I get more pounds of production with this than I do a mouse this is moose He's a big old boy. He's a, he's a breeder rat. He's about as big as my arm here, it seems. He's a good sized boy. I've had him for a while. He's a big buck for sure. So here is looking down at one of the rat pens. And you can see I have the water bottle here. There's actually room for two water bottles. I just have one here. Here's some green apple. Here's some, some rat food here. You can see the pine straw shavings. And this is a female here. Then I have a couple little babies left in here that I haven't harvested yet. And uh, this is a, a really hard type of plastic material. They cannot chew through it. You have a totally ventilated top. You have a place here for separating your food hopper from your water bottles. Once this is full and you have two full water bottles, this is self-sustaining and you don't have to worry about what you're gonna do with your rats for a long time several days actually you should always check on them of course but you don't have to give them water every single day or even food and definitely not change their bedding now i'm not trying to promote a particular product because there are several of these out there on the market so i'm not giving you a name or a company you research that on your own now there is a design that's similar to this but the bottom of the pen is wire so the the feces and the urine falls directly to the ground and you don't have to change the bedding that's an option too. I went this way so I had a little bit more control. And besides, I like using this bedding in my flower beds outside because it works so good as far as fertilizing and keeping mulch around my plants.
that it is a rat, but it's not a cat. It is a rat. Come on, buddy. Oh, calm down. Calm down. He's attacking me.